of my most popular videos was the uh, AC in a tent uh, under the title, uh, Your Wife is uh, Hot Camping. And uh, at this time, I think it just has over half a million views and uh, in about 12 months, and hopefully uh, we'll get up to a million views pretty soon. But I wanted to follow up with that video and I wanted to um, talk about a few things, some of the questions that I got, but also uh, actually AC a different uh, size tent and uh, talk about uh, some of the things that are different and approaches, uh, some of the concerns people have. This is our uh, three birth tent that we use a lot. I've got it in two or three other videos. Pampa Breen Air 3, meaning three person, three uh, birth. It is a inflatable. There's three inflatable tubes and then we do have this one metal piece for the uh, eyebrow. Um, just absolutely one of our favorite tents. Just took it out to, uh, last weekend. And so uh, a couple of things, uh, the questions people had, the number, uh, the top questions was how did I power the AC unit? And then number two, um, that's a lot of power. It was 14,000 BTU AC unit, 10,000 BTU heater. That's a lot of power, kind of expensive for people. It was in the $400, $450 range. Uh, it was portable and, it, and you can actually have it inside your tent. But what I wanted to share with you on this video that's more important is a, a more affordable, much more affordable AC unit. Also share with you, you know, how do I actually power it up? We are in the process of transforming uh, our kids' playhouse into a 1970s era uh, Vietnam fire base. So that's under construction and uh, I'll do a whole video on that down the road. But anyway, we're powering this up from this champion generator. I've done a whole video on this generator as this got us through Snowmageddon. Uh, we take this glamping, we take it camping, use it for uh, additional clean power. You really want to watch that video. Okay, back to now, let's talk about this tent and how do we AC it. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to show you the AC unit. This is a Medea, and um, it was right around $150. It's a 5,000 BTU. And just to show you, because this is real important, how did I do this? Well, I used the expandable uh, window pane parts uh, that you use. I just have it on a basic uh, metal stand right now. I'm gonna build a wood stand and I will show you how to do that. When I get that done, I'll uh, have that in another video or this video. But now let's go inside and look at things and see what we've got. It's not a sunny day and it's not real hot, but when I put this up over the weekend, um, we had a sunny day, it got up to 87 degrees. It was 125 inside the tent. It was searing. And, uh, but today it's uh, overcast, not direct sun. And uh, I'm gonna this up. I wanna go down here and show you right now the outside temperature is uh, 91 degrees and in the tent it's 92. So what I wanna do is share with you, now I didn't set this up for camping. This I set this up totally for demo, but to show you how I've uh, put the uh, AC unit inside, this is one of the doors on this particular tent and all I did was zip it down. I'm not using the mesh door that it has, but just the panel door. And I've got it set up like that. I've got the generator running. And so let's turn it all on and let's get a sense of how long does it take to get this down to a comfortable level. My other video, uh, we got down to 68 degrees for seven days. Absolutely, totally enjoyable. All right, let's, let me turn it on. When we started, it was about 92 degrees in here, 90 degrees outside. And um, right now we are at about seven minutes. And uh, let me touch that again so we See it keep going. Something that's important I wanted you to know is I, I don't have the tent completely sealed up. I, uh, I've got this ventilation panel or this mesh panel up here. Sometimes uh, if it's super cold or I want to seal this up, I'll put uh, painter's tape over. I also down here at the bottom, there's the, um, the door right here, the tub door. 
that's open. I do have this panel right here, this mesh panel sealed, and I don't have this mesh door using it all, I'm just using the regular panel door. In the back, there are mesh panels across the back on the outside. I have those just laying, I don't have those guide out. Uh, if we want more airflow, we would actually guide those out. All right, so the temperature now is equivalent to what's outside back here in this second section. But I will tell you this, it's interesting, oh, now it's 89 degrees. I will tell you this, the humidity feels so much less inside here than it does on the outside. We're at uh, nine minutes coming up on the 10 minutes. Let's see what the temperature is coming out of the AC unit. I'll shoot that and uh, see what we get. Okay, so we've got 61 degrees coming out of the, uh, the AC unit. Depends on where I scope it. Again, a little bit of airflow behind there. You know, you don't you don't want an air or you don't want a tent too tight. Um, you want to make it so there is a little bit of fresh airflow while you're in here. Now, if you haven't watched any of my videos, this is actually this whole mesh part back here is a tent inside a tent. Um, so this actually isn't a rain fly. This is the tent or fly above it, and um, then in here is for make it darker, uh, eliminate some of the sound, and at the same time, uh, like in the winter, you can seal up this whole section here. You can have mesh at the top, or there's actually now a, uh, a curtain you can bring up. You can seal it off completely to back here where it's the only mesh, but anyway. Okay, so we've got the um, generator going outside there. And uh, let's check the wattage again over here. Uh, 474. 473 watts. Now, that's important because if you are trying to run a, uh, a power station, not actually a generator, but a power station, and I don't, I don't want to name any particular brands, but there are a lot of them out there, um, those, you know, hold 1,800 to 3,000 watts. If, uh, if you're running a, a, a big AC or you're running a heater, you're going to burn through the wattage pretty quick. And uh, so now you can run your generator on eco mode or you can run a smaller generator and power up an AC unit. Now, one of the questions you might have is, you can hear that generator. And typically, we will put that 30 to 50 feet away. I recommend one of these uh, 30 amp extension cords. And um, don't don't go cheap on your extension cords. You'll pay for it. They can overheat and cause a fire. But they also uh, they don't move the uh, power electricity like you need. So they're very inefficient for cheap extension cords. But now you could hear that, and uh, I think this is around 60, 63 degree, uh, 63 decibels. And uh, state parks, uh, the uh, maximum is 64 decibels. And one of the things that's real important is uh, up until 10 o'clock, from 6 a.m. to 10 o'clock. And then in most state parks, and I'm talking about Texas where we live, you gotta shut your generators off. So now when you shut that generator off, uh, your tent eventually is going to get warm. And so one of the options now, because you're only pulling uh, less than 500 watts, is to, back here in the wattage. An option is to use that power station for the next, so if you got 3,000 watts, you can use that for the next six hours. And then in the morning when you turn on your generator, plug in your power station and power that up while you're running your AC unit. What we've found is you don't need to run your AC all the time because a lot of times during the day you're gone, um, or you're out and about, so you don't really need to run this all day, but you do need to run it when you want to be cool, at night or if you need to get out of the heat. And so uh, it's really nice to have 
have a generator and just by the way uh, on that particular generator this will run and I think we've got between 14 and 16 hours on a 20 pound tank right there. So you know that should go two to three days for you. Uh, we're getting a lot of power. I'm looking out the, the windows here uh, in this tent and uh, I highly recommend that uh, you watch our videos on the glamping tents because once you have a tent with windows and mesh doors and the ability to stand straight up, uh, it's just it's a different game. Okay, we're coming up on 15 minutes. Let's go take a look. We're coming up on 15 minutes and we're now down to 86 degrees back here in the back. And uh, the humidity is dropping. And I'll tell you what, it feels a lot to more crisp than this 35% humidity. And uh, that's the other thing about the temperature, uh, as we are well familiar in Texas, it's not the temperature, it's the humidity and the temperature creating that heat index. When I did that video, that first video on uh, putting an AC in a tent, I think the heat index was between 104 and 106. Um, the temperature was, I think, around 94 when I filmed that. So uh, anyway, all right, by 15 minutes, we've dropped six degrees. How wonderful is that? One of the comments uh, that I heard three or four times, maybe a few more uh, on the, the video about the AC and the tent is, hey man, that's a, that's not camping. And uh, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to disagree with anybody. Uh, that's why this channel is intense glamping. It's not intense camping. It's intense glamping. This is bringing kind of the comfort and the um, ability to camp much longer uh, in the states that are really hot, Florida, Texas, Arizona, some of these states that get so hot. And um, that may not seem like a big deal, but uh, between the swim holidays, Memorial Day and Labor Day, it's just unbearable uh, inside a tent. And so those are three or four months that uh, you just can't go uh, camping. And the problem with that, or what we enjoy a lot of, when we're able to camp those super hot summer months is there is a lot of availability for campsites because the RVs don't fill them all up so there's uh, plenty of availability but another thing is the lake water is really warm so the water sports like canoeing, kayaking, swimming, all those kinds of things uh, are available and they're really enjoyable but it's just so hot that you come back and your tent would be unbearable or at night you just can't sleep um, I, I do, uh, uh, I've, I've, I've done all kinds of camping. I've done survival camping. I've backpacked through the mountains in the snow. I've done all that. I'm just going to tell you, my wife isn't going to do any of that. Her, uh, she doesn't want to be uncomfortable. And most uh, spouses or a, a, a lot of women, um, they just don't want to be too hot. They don't want to be too cold. And that's one of their top three reasons they don't camp. And um, so, you know, um, it's fun for the guys, my son and I, when we go camping, but you know what, we want our wife to go with us sometimes, or, you know, his mom, and um, so uh, we, uh, we want her to go and be there with us. So we're coming up on uh, 20 minutes, and uh, we've dropped 7 degrees inside the tent, and uh, the air just feels wonderful. I mean, this is, uh, this is... Uh, just so enjoyable and comfortable. If it doesn't get any colder in the tent, it's, it's more than pleasant right now. We're at 90 degrees and about 40% humil humidity. It gets really stuffy. And uh, it's just not fun. And, and here's another thing about going up. One of the things I, uh, I learned when I was doing my research to start this business and to learn about the uh, air tents and inflatable tents that are being manufactured today is the average um, the average person uh, that goes camping average American only goes for uh, two days and one night they might go for a Friday Friday night and then leave Saturday or they might go for a Saturday uh, overnight and then leave Sunday I would say most of our scout trips are three days two nights but that's that's scouting you know or that's what we do that um, for most Americans they just don't really camp opposite to that are the Europeans and the Europeans will go for three to four weeks 
And how are they able to camp like that or why is it enjoyable? Because most people just can't tolerate camping for that long unless maybe it's survival. Well, it's all about the tent. It, it's all about, you know, your ability to live. And, um, you know, with this zone I'm standing in right now, which is called the living zone. Usually I have carpet carpeting down. I have a real nice setup back here. Um, we cannot uh, not just stand up and be comfortable back here for three people or two, two adults and somebody out here on the couch. Um, but we can, uh, when it's been raining, uh, thunderstorms, when it's been super cold, uh, when it's been buggy, um, we can uh, be inside here. We've had five people right here in this section. And again, this is one of our smaller, it is our smallest uh, inflatable glamping tent. But we can be inside here and then uh, out front, and you watch the, the other videos, we put on the canopy, extends it about five feet. You can do your cooking, you can store things out there, you keep your firewood dry, that kind of thing inside that canopy. So um, with these kinds of tents, you can uh, live in them for a long time and it's enjoyable and it's not claustrophobic. And because you have windows, you can see out and see what's going on. If you hear things, you can look out and shine your flashlight. So it just makes it really, really enjoyable. Another question I get uh, when I meet people or talk to people about intense glamping is um, they ask me, you know, how did I get started in uh, learning about inflatable tents and uh, how did I go about um, setting up this company and what am I trying to achieve? And um, you've been to our website, you watch the videos. Um, it's really not about selling tents or selling material, uh, gear and equipment. My whole intent is to educate people on how to enjoy camping, how to make camping more fun, uh, more enjoyable, more comfortable. Um, uh, I explain in this book that was recently published by McGraw Hill, and if you're going camping or glamping, I highly recommend you take this with you. And I explain in the book, in this particular chapter, on what's called multiple revenue streams. And this is really a roadmap on how do you uh, uh, take your company and uh, turn it into a highly profitable, fast growth business and become embarrassingly rich doing it. Okay, let's go over here and look and see how we're doing. Uh, we're coming up on uh, almost 30 minutes. We are now down to 82 degrees and 34% humidity. And um, it just feels really wonderful in here. You can, you can really feel the difference when you step outside and come back in, um, how uh, uh, the heat index outside versus uh, what it feels like inside the tent. And we're coming up on uh, almost uh, an hour here. Let's see what we've got. Uh, we have now the temperature down to 77 degrees and it feels really good in here. Uh, it's been exactly an hour. Um, the humidity is 11% lower than outside. It has dropped uh, three, almost four degrees outside, so that's helped. But, uh, We've gone from 92 down to 77, 15 degrees. And um, I'm gonna see how long it takes to get down to about um, 72 degrees. The other thing I think that's important is that um, it's actually cooler out here. Um, if, I, um, if I shot the floor, we're 72 degrees out here on the floor. I, uh, so we're 80 on the panels, 83 on that panel that faces the sun, um, same thing, but the floor now is uh, 75, and in the back here, 75, in the very back, 78, so it's uh, really starting to feel great in here. All right, it's almost been an hour and a half. Let's see what we got going on here. First of all, uh, I'm going to shoot the uh, 
temperature coming out of the AC unit and it's uh, 62 degrees if you can see that and then as I move it back here I move the panel back a little bit on the uh, inner tent or sleeping area and uh, now back here we have as I can uh, zoom in After an hour and a half, it's now down to 75 degrees from 92 and 35% um, humidity. So uh, I'm going to work to calculate what that heat index is for outside temperature, 88 degrees and 46% humidity. But uh, after an hour and a half, uh, it just feels more and more comfortable in here. And, and actually to the point where it's getting kind of chilly, um, the, um, the combination of Humidity and the temperature uh, is really what makes it things unbearable. 88 degrees by itself, low humidity is bad. 46% or almost 50% humidity is bad. We get summer days where it's in the 78% humidity and it's just sweltering. But uh, overall, 75 degrees and uh, still dropping uh, after an hour and a half. Very cool and comfortable at this point. Uh, I could probably uh, lower this down, uh, put it on low or uh, down, but I'm just uh, trying to test this to see what, uh, what kind of uh, temperature we can get inside the tent. Uh, definitely sleeping weather right now. Uh, anything uh, lower uh, just makes it more better. In the video that I did, uh, the first one I did, I had it 68 degrees, and very uh, low humidity. Uh, gosh, it was just wonderful. The, almost like that the crisp winter air uh, in the middle of June. Just so you know, one of the quick point about this air conditioner, I really found that about at $150 plus or minus $10.15, um, there's just everything below is $135. It's just kind of junk and garbage. All right, so it's been uh, right at two hours, and we are at uh, 73 uh, degrees. And um, it's interesting the um, humidity's gone up a little bit, uh, but it's still 6% less, and uh, we are now 13 degrees uh, cooler on the inside than we were on the outside. We're almost 20 degrees cooler than when we started, um, and uh, let's take a look over here now at the AC unit. Let's, uh, let me use the heat gun to see, or the temperature gun, let's see how we're doing here. Uh, 61 degrees coming out of the uh, AC unit and uh, back here we're almost down to 72 degrees it's pretty close so that's a 20 degree drop but the other thing when I did that first video we were using the hookups from the RV uh, area 30 amp hookups and so there was no noise uh, of a generator, so we could run that air conditioner all night. And my gosh, was it uh, comfortable. Let's go back here and take a look and see what we've got going on. It's been exactly three hours. We started uh, about four o'clock, and uh, it's now 70 degrees in the tent with uh, 39 uh, percent humidity, 49 <clears throat> percent uh, outside, and 85 degrees, so still really uh, really warm out, um, but golly, 70 degrees inside the tent is just awesome, and um, you know what, in the, in the summer, that's really wonderful, so uh, I think uh, I'll stop the test there, it works, it works well, we're 15 degrees uh, cooler than outside. <clears throat> I will try to run a test on a sunny day. Hopefully we've got uh, some coming up. It's supposed to rain over the next few days. But uh, right now uh, in our test with a 5000 BTU window air conditioning unit running off a generator, uh, we dropped the temperature when originally started 92. It has dropped 7 degrees outside and now is right around 71 probably just increased a degree because I'd opened up the uh, door and a lot of hot air came in or a lot of cool air went out and uh, but right at 71 degrees and quite comfortable so uh, 
this is uh, something you can do, something you can use. Uh, I hope you've learned and uh, you appreciate uh, uh, different ways to camp or now go glamping. And for $150 in a uh, AC unit and uh, roughly about a thousand in the generator, but I could use the generator so many different ways. And please watch that video on that generator because there were multiple reasons why I made that purchase over the literally thousand different types of generators throughout that it's dual fuel, the power of the wheels, uh, car compliant, uh, it's actually got a spark at the restaurant. So uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed it and uh, please like, share, subscribe, and leave questions that you have so uh, I can answer them. We get lots of great questions and we love having you uh, in our community. So you've now learned how to go from uh, camping in tents to intense glamping. So here's something else that's real important. When you're running a generator, and this is only, uh, this, this AC window unit, 5000 BTU, only needs roughly 500 watts uh, to run. And um, it's turned off right now, but what I want you to hear is when I turn this on, um, there's a, a burst of power that's required, and the generator right now is running on economy mode, but listen to this. You heard that generator just have to kick up for a little while. This is why it's important that when you buy a generator, and please watch my uh, generator video, when you buy a generator, you need some what's called headroom. Uh, you need that starting power. And if you get a generator that's too small, 2,000 or 1,000 watts, and your AC unit or a heater uh, needs, you know, a heater, it typically needs about 1,500 watts. Something like this uh, AC unit probably needs 800 to 1,000 watts to turn on and kickstart the compressor. But after it's running, and we can look up over here and see, after it's running, um, we should only need about 434 watts continuous. So um, just something uh, that I, I want you to know, especially if you're just getting into generators or you're thinking about running an AC unit like this, um, there are these, just these little, little things to know, these little tips and tricks, and uh, trying to help educate you and help you have a wonderful a camping or uh, intense glamping trip. Thank you.